Okay, in All About Maps Part 2, we're going to finish looking at map analysis and then get into map projections. Now for a quick word on scale. There are two definitions that are basically almost contradictory, so let me explain. When you think of scale, what you tend to think of is the territorial extent of something. You're starting with, let's say, a local scale to a regional scale. You start with something smaller and get larger. This is how most people interpret what scale means. So you get to the national level, or you get to global, and you get the idea that it gets larger and larger, the territorial extent. But in a map, scale means the distance on a map compared to the distance on the Earth. How much of the Earth has been shrunken down uh, to fit on an image? If you don't notice this, that's Pinecrest. So, to understand scale in a map sense, it's really representative of a fraction. So, if you look at this map with this scale, and you go down towards this map with this scale, you're actually going from smaller scale to larger scale. And that is because it's a smaller fraction compared to a larger fraction. The best way to remember this is that small scale means small detail. Large scale means large detail. So to recap on scale, if you take a look at this map, the instincts that you would have most likely say, hey, this is large scale. It's dealing with a lot of area. But in reality, it is small scale because of the fraction. So if I go to a level where you're looking at a national scale, North America at night, well, this is getting to larger scale. Or if I zoom in even more, you look at Florida at night, this is an even larger scale. The next section to look at is going to be under map projections. So look at this image. When you take a three-dimensional object, you take a sphere, like the Earth, and I want to shrink it down so I have an accurate projection. Basically, to understand, a globe is a map. But if you want to carry you know, 20 or 30 globes around, you realize how inefficient that is. So we have to flatten them onto a two-dimensional object, onto a piece of paper or a map. And in this case, you will always have some degree of distortion can't avoid it. So you go from three dimensions to two, you will have distortion. Now, this animated image shows how a three-dimensional sphere is flattened out into two dimensions. This is a Damaxian projection. Its purpose will be explained in just a little while, but I wanted to give you an idea about how at least one projection is created. Now, there are four basic classes of map projections. They're based on how they have been derived. So you have conic, cylindrical, planar, oval, but more importantly, I want to talk about how the accuracy of these map projections are done. There are two basic types of projections. The first type is conformal. These projections are designed to preserve the shape of the polygons. Now let me explain what a polygon actually is. Uh, polygons are created by the intersection of latitude and longitude. Latitude specifies the north-south position of a point on the Earth. Lines of constant latitude, or called parallels, will run east-west as circles that are parallel to the equator. So if you look at this line here, it represents zero degrees latitude, that's the equator. Very simply put, you can remember them as rungs of a ladder. So latitude, ladder, you go up or down measuring north or south. Now longitude, on the other hand, that specifies east and west. Longitude is an angular measurement running from the North Pole to the South Pole. The Prime Meridian passes through the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. So you see zero degrees right here at the Prime Meridian. So where they intersect, those are the polygons. And in this case, you can see in this particular projection, they are set at right angles, which makes it very good for navigating, but it really does a massive distortion, especially as you get to the poles. Now, the second type of a projection is the equal area projection, which is focused on area preservation. Uh, in this instance, you can see that the polygons are distorted, but the shapes and the sizes of the landforms are much more accurate. And that's where the purpose of this one is. Now you can see on these different types of projections where the darker shading is, where you have greater distortion. Um, in the case of cylindrical, you can see where they are in this instance or in planar as well. So let's go over some named projections that you really do need to know uh, for this course. Uh, start with a couple of conformal projections. 
first one, we saw this one before, the Mercator projection, uh, put together by a cartographer back in the late 1500s. And this is really a navigator's map. So you can see that all the angles are right angles, and the idea is that way you can plot a course. The problem is, as you get closer to the poles, you see greater and greater distortion. As you get really higher up, it's almost unusable. This is another one. This is called the Peters projection, sometimes referred to as the Gull Peters projection. In this case, it's almost in reverse. So you can see where you have the equator, and you do have distortion here as well in the poles, but here as well. This actually was a goal also to keep equal area. So it's not just a conformal projection, it's also sometimes considered an equal area projection. So let's look at some more of those as well. This is called an azimuthal projection. It's a planar projection, as you can see how that is. But you need to know these words. Uh, this is a mall-wide projection. And again, you can see where the idea is to maintain the equal area, not so much worrying about the angular preservation of the polygons. You can see this one. This is a conic projection, as we had seen before. Okay, I showed you this one before. This is the Fuller, or also known as the Dimaxian projection. Basically, what you do is you take a sphere, you turn it into an icosahedron, which is 20 sides, you flatten it out, and here you go. And of course, the goal here is to keep the shapes of the landforms as accurate as humanly possible. And then we look at some of these, these hybrid projections. This one's very commonly used. It's the Robinson projection. So you're making sort of a compromise between angular preservation and area preservation. This one is a goods interrupted homolysine map. And as you can see, it, it's basically that you have peeled an apple. They take the skin off of an apple and you flatten it out and this is what you tend to see. So the area of the landforms is preserved by cutting into areas of where you would have the water, where you have fewer people. And you can see where distortion is greater. And now a special service announcement from our sponsor, Thor. People often wonder how I stay so mighty. I've got one word for you, Prancer Sounds. <laughs> Thank you.